this video, I'm going to be going over Simple 1.5, new version of a software virtual instrument that is made by Chris St. Alban. And Chris is a friend of mine, sent me the software to check out. He's not paying me to make the video, but he did send me the software for free. But what I want to do today is show you the software, but also show you how you could approach any virtual instrument and start to make sense of that virtual instrument and the oscillators, the LFOs and things like that and how they would connect. Because all I had to do was open the software. I'd never seen it you know, before a couple days ago, and I could figure out pretty much everything without looking at the manual. So we'll look at some of those basic things with this synthesizer. We'll play around with some of the sounds and just go show some support to Chris, who is a one-man operation making virtual instruments. And he also runs an incredible Facebook group called Cubase Users. And make sure you go check that out as well. If you are a Cubase user, very helpful. He's been very helpful in getting the word of my videos out there as well. So super appreciative towards him. So let's have a look at it. And when you load it up, all you have to do is go over to load in Halion Sonic and just choose simple from the libraries that you have installed. And all you need is the free Halion Sonic SE3 to run this virtual instrument. I'm sure it comes with it if you buy it. I like to tear off the browser myself and just have it on the side here so I can go through patches. Let's go to initialized simple. Over on the left hand side, we've got the oscillators and there's two oscillators in this synthesizer. Some patches will have one oscillator only and some will have two oscillators. And if you want to see if the oscillator two is actually on, all you have to do is go look at the volume. So very simple. Sorry, I'm going to be saying that a couple of times, I'm sure. So one thing that I read in the manual on this one is that the waveforms themselves are not meant to be perfect sine waves or triangles or anything like that. The shape is meant to be slightly more organic. At least that's my take on it. And so if I go to the shape right here, now we're getting into a sawtooth wave. And then we get into pulse modulation with the square wave. So the oscillators themselves sound kind of different. And then he's got this huge control here called the simple control. It is doing some kind of doubling and some phase shifting and stuff like that. And so if you listen to it, it sounds kind of like a unison, a chorus kind of thing with some other detuned voices and stuff like that and some panning that's going on. But it's all just under the hood. Next, we've got the fine tuning. Uh, the oscillator pitch in semitones, and then we've got volume and pan. Next thing we've got in the middle here is the supertone section. And the supertone section switches between digital, analog, and bionic. He's not telling us exactly what is happening in these sections. All we're hearing is that it's just changing the character of the sound. Digital, analog, kind of changes the attack, and bionic. So over on the right hand side, we can see the filter. And he's got some aggressive filters in here and a whole bunch to choose from. There's new ones that just came out in the latest version. And then he's got slightly different names for things like the emphasis is just the resonance. And that's emphasizing the frequencies near the cutoff and using terms that maybe make a little bit more sense because low pass filters filtering out high frequencies. And right at the spot where it drops off, resonance will put a bump you get this boost and it's often moving the cutoff with that bump happening you get these really much more aggressive sounds so what i like to do with this software is apply some midi control to some of these knobs so i'm going to apply uh, learn cc i'm going to put knob one on my keyboard here to the simple control and then i'm going to put knob two here to the cutoff and then i'm going to put the resonance to learn cc to knob three So obviously with the emphasis up, you get more of that, that uh, nasal sound than just the regular filter. Next, we've got the envelope section. If it's on the volume, you are now playing with the, the volume as it kicks in and the release when you let your finger go. So if you want like a pad sound, crank up the attack. And then we can put envelopes on the filters themselves. And this envelope amount right here is what's going to determine how much you've got going on there. Let's say I want to take this user envelope and apply that to this shape control. So now I go over to this middle section and I go over to this modulation section. Here I would choose the source, which I want to be user envelope. And the destination 
I want this to control this shape right here. So I go destination oscillator one shape. So now this user envelope is attached to this shape control, but we're still not quite there yet because we need to have an amount. So if you just did that, nothing would happen with the envelope. But if I crank this all the way up, now it's going to move this shape control. And let's take now this attack and we'll see it changing the, sh the shape over time and even slower. So there we go. We've just used the, a user envelope to change some other parameter. And then at the bottom section here, we have LFOs. And that LFO we would use on, say, this shape control if we wanted to keep changing over time. So I'm going to get rid of this user envelope and let's do the same thing. We're going to make the destination oscillator one shape, but we're just going to use LFO. Let's go to LFO three and use LFO three to control oscillator one shape. So we're going to see it going back and forth and we're going to actually see that control animated right here. So if I press a note down, we can see it moving here and we can see it moving here, which I, I like that they've got, he's got the animations going. We can sync it to the beat of your project. We can choose the rate right here. Let's go to uh, quarter notes. And then of course, if we go over here, we can see other things like effects. He's got effects built in there. And then if we look at this voice section, he's got one other thing in here, which is kind of cool. And it is this uh, super voice setting, which from what I understand is only on monophonic patches. Do you know what we should do is just go over to a new patch. So right now I'm in simple and I'm going to go thin this out by category. And we're going to go to, uh, let's go to a synth lead. Let's go to voice. We're going to set this to mono. And we can hear it gliding between the two notes. I'm going to turn the glide down a bit. Oh, and I realized that the glide goes the opposite way from what I was expecting. Let's go this way. And you can see the glide goes by portions of beat. In this case, I just want it to be really fast. So I'm going to go fast. And I'll set it to legato. And hear the difference. I don't get the attack of the note if it's on legato. But if I set it to mono, you get the attack of the note every time you either release your finger or play a new note. And then over on the right hand side, we have another feature that's kind of unique to this one, the super voice. And if you click on it, you get all sorts of crazy other sound mangling capabilities. So if I click on Husky one, let's go to ultra wide. And let's go to chaos. So that we can hear ping pong it's going back and forth between the speakers. I'm not sure if there's any way to go in and actually change like how fast those things go, or maybe you just use different ping pong settings. There's also attack, so he's got like attack on a kick. Just ways of adding kind of like transients at the beginning of your, your sound. Usual things apply with the arpeggiator, but the cool stuff that he's got in here is all of these different sets for the arpeggiator pattern. This one sounds fun to uh, try some arpeggiator stuff out. I've got this super arp patch. I'll go to voice and we'll go to pattern. We'll go back to the genre. This is really interesting. I'm quite intrigued by this. I've sort of tweaked the patch a little bit. Let's play around with some of these other arpeggiator patterns. Chill out E. Let's go to dream. Okay, so you can hear what's happening on each of these patterns. Sometimes they're taking the notes you're playing up further octaves and just changing the pattern, the intensity of the notes and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Ibiza. And then 
you can go to a custom pattern as well and enter in your own. So those are the basic features of the synthesizer. And there are some new effects that he's got in here as well. So all sorts of different effects to choose from. But let's just play with a few of these patches. I've got one drum kit in here from Purple, Groove Agent Expansion, really nice set. I've got a video on that. I'll put it in the description as well. Okay, so this first patch I've got in here is this Android Lambs patch. This patch would be neat to have some kind of filter that opens up very slowly over time. So what we could do is go to LFO3 and we're going to assign LFO3 to cutoff. So it sounds like I want this one to go over several bars. We have it assigned to LFO3, assigned to the cutoff. Oscillator, filter, cutoff. And we're gonna crank this up. And then we're going to set OS LFO3 to be a sine wave over, let's go to, let's try two bars. So that's not, that's going too fast. So let's set it to four bars. Now it's working the way I want it. Okay, so the next patch I've got in here is called 90s String. So right hand playing in sixths. And then the next thing we've got is a simple saw bass. So let's go find a couple more patches. You know what, let's go to the arpeggiated patches. And so I'm under subcategory here. Sweet patch, but not gonna work here. Yeah, that one kind of, might be kind of neat, but it'd be neat if that simple control was a little more intense. Back to the browser, look for a lead. I like this one. This one's called Whale Calls. And let's go to the voice and we're going to make sure this is on legato. And let's try playing with the super voice thing. And let's go to uh, ultra wide. Cool, let's try playing with the super tone. Yeah, let's go with this analog one. Just sounds a little bit different. And then let's try along with this. Thanks, Chris, for sending this over. And I just wish you the best with this virtual instrument. So thanks so much for watching the video, everybody else. And we'll see you in the next one.